Hai, ziakan. Uh, the police are the you know our local steps are basically outnumbered I mean you know we really need real intervention we want the military you know we had the summer summers normally having their turf war and you know it's been ongoing but this weekend what's happened is that they came into the community they were shooting with heavy arm guns uh, our community members had to lay on the floor because gunshots was going throughout i mean our children are in danger we can't walk in the roads at night we can't walk in the streets we cannot be driving everybody needs to be in at 5 30 because that's when their war starts A recent war between two rival Zama Zama gangs in Rivoli, south of Joburg, resulted in frequent shootings, uh, claiming the life of 31-year-old Ernest Mankena, an innocent civilian, and leaving the community engulfed in fear. Last week, a string of raids by SAPS and JMPD saw more than 100 illegal miners arrested, explosives, high-caliber weapons and tools used in the refining of illegally mined gold confiscated. And while the efforts of law enforcement to root out criminal elements plaguing the community of Rivoli have been welcomed, it's unlikely that it's going to have a long-term impact, with locals adamant that Zama Zamas will return in a few weeks. Now, the Minister of the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, Gwede Mantashe, claims the issue of Zama Zamas is a matter of criminality, solely the responsibility of police despite his department allowing illegal mining to spiral out of control by not ensuring proper rehabilitation of mined areas are done. The family of 31-year-old Ernest Mangena don't believe police can effectively deal with the issue of illegal miners. Mangena was driving home from church with his wife on July 27th when a number of bullets struck their vehicle. He sustained a single gunshot wound to the head that claimed his life. His sister-in-law Dawn Mushwana spoke to Eyewitness News. Around quarter past 12, past 8, I had a shooting around extension trip. A phone call rings and then well, that was my younger sister and I'm expecting her to tell me they're already home because I was thinking that she want, just want to tell me they're home safe. And I just had a scream from the phone like, say, see, say, see, uh, my, my husband just got shot. I was like, where? She was there, we were here around in Riverley. I ran to the scene, the ambulance was not there yet, but the police were already there. So, and then she came out from the crowd, coming to me crying. I was like, what happened? She was like, we were coming. And then we just saw this uh, guys with blankets running through the wall. So there was the police on the other side. Like it was a shooting between the police and the, and the Zamazamas. Now, police spokesperson, Lieutenant Colonel Mavela Masondo said uh, at least one Zamazama was arrested for the shooting. Sounds of voices and digging beneath homes in Rivoli are often heard by residents who are adamant that Zama Zamas are operating right beneath their feet. Rivoli resident Teresa Gorridge paints an eerie picture of hearing voices beneath her home at odd hours in the morning. And she says she's not the only one. I found her about twice, I think, already. And I said to her, can she hear voices? Because I'm here, but I can't see to her side, you know. Uh, is the guys talking with your stuff? Then she says, no, there's no one. So I said, Inga, I'm telling you, I'm hearing voices and choppy, you know, like digging. Because it's almost like it's coming up. It's not around type of thing. So I said, oh, they're digging underground. We're going to lay here in our houses. I'm going to fall in under us one day with these people that's digging here for gold and stuff. Continuous blasting happens here. And this happens in the mornings. It does not happen at night. Uh, standing and cooking and they passed here, they had blankets and I and my grandson said to me don't mention nothing, just look because they will shoot because he said underneath those blankets is the ammunition. 
So this is how close this camp has moved into the neighborhood. Um, I mean, you can see it's right on the, the community that lives here. It's right on the doorstep. And this is what they have to contend with on a daily basis. Now the issue pertaining to Riverly boils down to a company by the name of Central Rand Gold. In 2006, Central Rand Gold began work behind the scenes to obtain a mining license to open a closed historic mining shaft in the area, the George Harrison Park, which is a provincial heritage site in Riverly. Part of CRG's work was to hire charismatic people to garner the go-ahead from the community of Riverly, a crucial part of being granted their mining rights. Two such people were businessman Gaten McKenzie and socialite Kenny Kunene, the current president and deputy president of political party Patriotic Alliance, which was formed in November 2013. Now, McKenzie says he was employed as the head of community development. So I was working for CRG. And I wasn't working in the mining division at all. Like I got the mining rights for gold fields, that's my business. That's what I do. I do mining rights for companies. And then when I didn't agree with them, uh, Central and Gold, we didn't agree on various issues when it comes to empowerment of the Soweto and the Revoli community. I left the company around 2008. So I was there for two, two to three years. And I've never had anything to do with Central and Gold anymore. No, I think, you know, when you make some promises to the community, and then you don't keep your end of the bargain fully. So I think there were some people in CRG that I think they were no longer enthusiastic about keeping the promises to members of the community. And I decided, you know what, it's my name, it's my, I go to the community, I'm leaving, so I resigned. The CRG was awarded mining rights in November 2008 by the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. They mined the area until 2017 when they made an application for a new mining license. DMRE denied their license. So CRG appealed DMRE's denial and during this process the company went into liquidation. And this was in 2018, 10 years after they began their operations in the area. Now lead researcher at Benchmark's foundation David Van Veek says CRG should never have been granted a license in the first place. When the mine started we said they should not be mining them. Um, we, we doubted that that was a viable mine when the mining license was issued. And indeed, it was never a viable mine. It never produced an ounce of gold. Um, it was mining pension funds um, and it was mining uh, bank loans and so on. You know, it never actually showed any profit. It never paid any dividends and so on. And then uh, it went then it went bankrupt. Um, and of course, the directors all left and uh, regardless of the companies to act, they all go and they open up other mining companies and they apply for other mining licenses in very dubious circumstances. Uh, there was another one called Mintails in uh, Randfontein, which was also just a scam. And these scams go on and on and on and on. Uh, what is actually quite shocking is that um, about two years ago, uh, the Gauteng director for DMRE gave the project of rehabilitating that hole behind TC Estrays in school. It is a kilometer long, it's uh, 50 meters wide, and it's about 100 meters deep. Um, and, you know, the school road fell into that hole. The shocking thing is that the DMRE then gave a license to someone who was involved in the scam of Mintails. To close this hole, but when we when we looked at the 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 um, documentation for the rehabilitation, we discovered that no, this is actually a not a rehabilitation instruction; it's a mining instruction, and that the DMRE wanted further mining there for another three years. Any mining license that's less than ten years is not a viable mining license; it's a scam. Um, and 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 we see all along Main Reef Road the DMRE issuing these licenses all the time, despite the fact that communities are opposed to them. According to company records, CRG is under provisional liquidation and it has five active directors and 30 former directors. Efforts to contact CRG's directors proved futile. CRG's operation opened up tunnels and shafts of the old George Harrison and Crown mines in the area. 
Minutes from meetings between the Rivoli community and CRG documented promises by the company that it would ensure proper rehabilitation would commence. But this never materialized. Rehabilitation refers to restoring the land to its natural state. In essence, what the area looked like prior to any mining activities co were conducted. In a parliamentary reply in May 2021, the DMRE revealed that a rehabilitation program had been submitted by a company called Amache Mining, wherein it proposed to rehabilitate many parts of the mining areas of CRG. In addition, DMRE said that about 45 million rand was held as financial provision provided by CRG, which could be used for rehabilitation purposes. But this money has been unaccounted for, and despite questions put to DMRE by Eyewitness News, they have yet to reply. The company Amachi Mining was registered with the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission in 2017, the main director of which is Edward Milner. Now, Milner is a controversial character among mining and environmental activists, as he once held the position of Chief Financial Officer and Director of the South African subsidiary of a controversial company called Mintel's Group. Mintel's Limited was an Australian listed mining company which had SA subsidiaries, namely Mintel's Gold SA, Mintel's SA Ranfontein Cluster, and Mintel's SA Soweto Cluster. Majority of its mining operations were based on the West Rand. Now, the company was cast into the spotlight in July last year when eight women were raped on its abandoned North Sands dump in Krugersdorp, allegedly by illegal miners. The Mintels Group liquidated in 2018, leaving numerous open pits and reclaimed tailing storage facilities unrehabilitated. Mariette Liffering, CEO of the Federation for Sustainable Environment, says Mintails bought Mohale Gold out of liquidation in 2006. Uh, from 2006 to 2018, they partially reclaimed some of the historic tailing storage facilities. They only recovered the profitable parts. From 2012 to 2018, they mined illegally. This is in terms of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee's oversight visit, and uh, it was stabled in Parliament. They mined illegally open pit, open cast mining on the West Rand. It's clusters of open pits. These clusters of open pits can still be accessed. There are no warning signs, there are no fences, there are no access control. So um, in 2018, when they liquidated, that, they had an unfunded rehabilitation liability of 460 million rand. Mintos Limited, the Australian mining company, then delisted from the uh, Australian Stock Exchange and then relisted under another name, Ormanex, in a maneuver, we uh, assume, to um, not be res held responsible or liable for the South African subsidiaries. According to company records, Milner resigned as a director of Mintails's three SA subsidiaries in October 2016, registering a Mache mining seven months later. Milner submitted an application for the rehabilitation of Central Rand Gold's mined areas in the Rivoli area in January 2020, which has not yet been approved. He told Eyewitness News that he had nothing to do with Rivoli and he was in limbo regarding his application. We have not been granted a directive by the department. Whatever they might have said in whatever parliamentary committee or whatever you're referring to, okay, you have no evidence associated to that. I don't have a directive in my hand that has been issued to us. Secondly, we have applied for a mining right back in 2019 already to relating to the area that is covered there. But the department has not processed the application and has placed a hold on it. So from our perspective at the present time, we in limbo. We have no connection to Rivoli at the present time. In 2021, Milner successfully obtained the transfer of the mining rights previously held by Mintels for the West Witz Monarch. At the time Milner was granted the transfer, the DMRE regional director for Gauteng was Sunday Mabaso. Mabaso says he had issued a directive to Amache Mining to go ahead with the rehabilitation for CRG's sites in Rivoli, even though this process hasn't been finalized. Mabaso confirmed he no longer worked for DMRE, but rather consults as a mining advisor to various companies, including Amache. When questioned whether it was at all concerning that he had issued a directive to a company that previously had links to Mintails, Mabaso said he was unaware that there was a connection between Milner and Mintails. He confirmed that the mining companies were using legislative loopholes as the 
Mineral Petroleum Resources Development Act is soft and has many loopholes. The legacy mine, those who created mines in the past and have left, the, the act is a little bit uh, soft and has got some loopholes on them. And they, the option that they have is Section 28 of NEMA that they can use. However, it has proven to be difficult. When I was at DMR, we tried to hold uh, creators of, of, of this position, uh, to hold them liable for their uh, 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 actions. But unfortunately, the process never uh, succeeded. Government wants to essentially resolve the issues of Zama Zamas in South Africa. It's likely to be put onto the taxpayers for this to be done. And this is due to a number of loopholes within the Act which regulates mining in South Africa, and that's the Mineral to Petroleum Resources Development Act. What mining companies essentially do is they've found loopholes or legislative loopholes in this Act, and they continue to use these loopholes to get themselves out of any sort of responsibility or accountability of rehabilitating mining sites. They do this by mining the area and then simply going under business rescue and liquidating. Now, the Mineral Resources Petroleum Development Act states that the Minister of the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy can hold the directors and shareholders of those companies responsible should they not rehabilitate areas of which they've mined. But we have yet to see that happen. The Department of Mineral Resources and Energy's silence regarding issues of Zama Zamas that has erupted in South Africa of recent is questionable. And despite a 2018 report by Parliament that the Minister should be holding mining companies and their directors and shareholders accountable, nothing yet has been seen or been done regarding these mining companies. They are law unto themselves and they've been allowed free reign to operate and do as they please in South Africa. But more than the environmental impact that we've seen is now an impact of criminality which is playing in communities and as of yet there's been one incident live claimed but how many more before something is done?